set up your inlay tool. Now when you get this out of the, out of the box, you're going to have a couple of pieces. Now you're going to notice your inlay base, if you try to put this in this way, is not going to fit. So what you need to do, you take this off. this off and you're actually going to bring this up from the bottom. This knob will lock you onto the quill. So you can put this back in. And now we can do all of the plumbing. Now I'm just putting this together to make it easier to work. Air capacity, you want to have a decent sized air compressor, just a little pancake thing probably will not work. We're talking 90 pounds per square inch at 0.9 cubic feet per minute. Uh, always the bigger the better, uh, but you may not always have that option. So you want to make sure you at least match what you need because these things do use a lot of air. So we put this together, you'll tighten this up with your wrench. This is your exhaust tube. The air comes through here. That will have an, uh, a connection to go into the air compressor. The air exhausts out the top here. Now you might be thinking, I'll take the exhaust tube and I can use that as a uh, blowing the dust away. With these tools, it's not necessary. They spin so fast, they create enough turbulence that they actually are self-clearing. What you will want to do is on the exhaust end, because they do make a lot of noise, you take a paper towel, and you can see I folded it up, and then I tape it onto the end of the tube, and that will capture oil. Also, it works like a little muffler, water, uh, and it does help to make it a little bit quieter, because these things do scream, and I will mention that it might be a good idea to use ear protection. Uh, as far as dust removal, OSHA rates Pearl as a nuisance hazard. However, always err in the side of safety. So that is how to set up the air tool unit into this. These you will adjust high and low. You can put your cutter into here. Now a cutter, I use a number of different cutters. I use most of the time one thirty second bit. Uh, I will have these on the website very soon. The 20,000 spit is something that I will use for fine detail work. And then my one of choice is the 132nd, which is this one. And I find that does pretty much everything I need it to do except for a little bit of detailing. Uh, these are solid carbide and these are upcuts. I don't I'm not a fan of a downward spiral bit uh, because for number one it pushes the work down in, or the, the, the chips into your work and you want to evacuate the chips if you can. Uh, a downward spiral would be fine for a cleared hole but not a closed hole. If you have a Dremel tool, the Dremel tool is going to work basically the same way. Only thing is you're going to spin this on and you could do this right on the base and there we go and then that will mount onto there now I do use the Dremel tool in conjunction when I'm cutting pearl more for doing some finish work and sanding off the edges which you'll see shortly so thanks for buying one of my inlay tools now you know how to set it up uh, keep the bit sharp on the air tool Every day that you use it, put a drop or two of some type of air tool oil in it. On your air compressor, you do want to use a oil water separator filter. I have them on my main compressor, and that way on a humid day, you aren't blowing water through the unit. If that does happen to you, as soon as it happens, get WD-40. Put a liberal amount in here. Hold it upside down so that you get the WD-40 down into your unit. Allow your 
uh, compressor to cool down and then blow it through and then re-oil it because if you do not all you got to do is put one little roller in that bearing in there and you will just close this thing up and ruin it so remember if the water comes through it and you'll know it it'll just all of a sudden sound extremely weird uh, get the water out of it get WD-40 in there and then re-oil re the tool and you should be fine uh, I've actually tried to destroy these things and it takes a lot to destroy them so if you take just a reasonable amount of care here to help I'm going to show how to inlay this will be a headstock veneer uh, this is a pre-cut famous torch design we're all familiar with I'm going to show you how simple it is to inlay this it's not a complicated process uh, you only need a few tools these are 0.3 millimeter drafting pencils I have, this is my inlay tool that we designed with the help of Dave Nichols from Custom Pearl Inlay. For those of us that need a little help, these are a little OptiViewer. Water, super glue, activator, a little bit of things to help hold the pearl. Some tape, steel wool, uh, scotch pad. And what I have to do first is I have to free my pearl off of my shipping container. So I just put a little bit of water, pop my pearl off the cardboard, and this just soak for a little bit. It will come off. And I'm just going to let that soak for a little bit, and then that will allow the glue to release pearl from the paper and if you try just taking it off the pearl is so delicate it can possibly break in fact we did have one piece here that did break it's not the end of the world it'll still be a usable product I take a razor blade you can just scrape this stuff right off nice and neat These, this is the delicate part the little tool and for those of you who like to cut your own patterns uh, we will be showing you how to cut pearl at some point just not today now if you can't see it there is a center line drawn on here, and I used a 0.3 millimeter pencil. Come down about three quarters of an inch, and then I'm going to start laying out my pearl. Now I know that this is the top part. That's the lid. That's the next piece. This is the next piece. This comes down here. We have our tulip. We actually have two of them. This one here, the pearl's cracked. And this is not uncommon when you're dealing with, with natural pearl. So we will take care of this when we inlay it. There'll be two teardrops and a series of little dots that are literally in there soaking right now. I have a tweezers. And here's how we get started. The trickiest part is learning how to hold your pearl. Uh, it's not that hard. But in order to hold this so that nothing moves around, I'll take tape. And I basically will just tape this down. Normally I just do this on the bench, but we have this little black pad so you can get to see what's happening a little bit neater. So I'm going to start with this pair. Now you can see that that pair we have that centered up with a notch, and I have it centered up with its little dot up here. I'll just take, this is a, just a ten penny nail, ground to a point. And I'm going to hold this gently. The hard part is learning how to manipulate your pencil so that you can draw the profile. We are inlaying in ebony. And what I want to do is get my line centered, get my points where I need them to be, because I basically inlay this whole contrivance in one effort. If you can zoom in on there, you can maybe see 
how that is laid out. Here's my dot right here. Now I'm at a point where I can see the reflection of the pencil onto my ebony. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but that's what we're looking for. Some people will scribe and use chalk dust. They use any, whatever works. Uh, this is a method that I learned and it works for me. We want to take our bit and we need to adjust our bit to the depth of the pearl. So you can see I have my depth already set to my cutter depth. And if you see how that is, that's all I did. Now this little tool here will take a lot of air. It spins at 70,000 RPM. This is my professional model. The hobby model will spin at 56. It will work quite well too. The object is I'm going to take this and I'm going to plunge at all of the points. And then at that point it's going to be connect the dots. So I'm going to do this in a couple of stages and I'll try to do this so that you can see it. Now just all I did, all of my points are now marked. I'll start up here at this little dot I'll line out here, I'll line out here, and then I'll clean the field. The object is to go to the pencil line at this point. Now you can see how quickly I made my profile. I'm not at the line, I'm close to it. Now I'm just going to color out the field and open it up. So you can see how quickly you can remove the material. Now I'm going to go to the line and then I'm going to check for fit to see how close I am. Now I have things that I'm about ready to test fit. So I'll just set this in here. And I'm not expecting this to fit as of yet. I'm just looking to see if there's any anything I need to be aware of. Right now my pencil lines look pretty good. I don't see any big big mistakes. So now I'm going to work on this side so maybe you can see a little bit better on the detailing of what I'm doing. I have a pencil line here yet from my original trace out and now I'm just going to try to split that line. Okay, I took it to the line and I will tell you that the bit that I'm using is a two flute bit. I do not use a downward spiral. Uh, these bits are very affordable when your bit stall, it's still a downward spiral bit on a closed in hole like this tends to let the fibers drop down into the hole and you get a false fit. These I find work real, real well. So now I can get my fit in here. I have things pretty close. And to make it a little bit better, I actually have it start to drop at spots. I can go in here now with my pencil and it's actually not too bad. Now I just have to clean these lines up. So now, a little bit over here at this point, that needs to be clean. My center line is very good. The bit that I am using is a 1 32nd bit. I will sometimes use a 20 thousandths bit. But I will admit, ebony is very, very forgiving for inlay. So I can afford to be a little, a little open. Appears I have a little bit right down here to cut. Now the pot, I think the pot lid's going to go in. There's the dot. Now that piece just snapped, but I'm not going to lose a lot of sleep over it. Got a little heavy with my finger. A little awkward because I'm working opposite than I normally do so you can see what I'm doing. Now what I really enjoy about using ebony 
Ebony is extremely forgiving. Now my tweezers, just a standard sizable hobby tweezers that I actually have filed to a point so I can get into tight areas. <laughs> So I'm pretty happy with that. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fix this a little bit so I can continue working and not have to keep lifting this all the time. I want to fix that little crack. Let's care of that. Touch of accelerator. And that's it. Now I have not filled it. I just made this in there. The next piece I'm going to put in is this guy. And this will be the same thing. I'm going to hold. Now I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm just going to point, point out all of the high points and then connect the dots. It's not, not very difficult. And I'll just drop my points. All right. Now, I have that pretty much lined, and I did have a little runaway here, so I want to show you that there's a little gap here, which you're going to take notice later is going to disappear. The trick to this is in the filling, and since I'm working so opposite of what I normally do, that doesn't look bad, I got my lines showing, my points up here are nice. Won't be much. Uh, now that should plop right in. A little tight. But you can see that it's actually starting to sit in the hole, and all of my features are pretty close, and this is just a tight line. That fits that in. Next part will be this. And I try to do all my verticals first, and then I'm going to do my, my offshoot, or lay out the next piece. Now I have not set this one in. That's one piece, I'm not too worried about it. And again, I'm going to do my pointing out, all my high points, and then I'll come in. Now, since I have this removable, I'm going to take that out. And we're going to do my pointing and lining. parts set in where I need them to be. Now some people would think that you'd want to use dust and glue and I have found that dust and glue leaves a halo. So the trick to this for an invisible fill I have to put wax paper in underneath here because I punched some holes in the ebony Normally I inlay these on the neck, but this is the fascinating part of this deal. I take a magic marker. And I cover all of the pearl up with a healthy covering of the magic marker and then I'll spray that with the accelerator. Now that dissolves 
the paint medium but leaves the color. Now when I put the super glue on there, the super glue will pick up this black. And I want you to remember where some of these little marks were, because when we're done with this, you'll never see them. I am using thin super glue. And what I will do is I'll let that sit a little bit before I hit it with the activator because I don't want it to foam up. And then I'll do that again until I'm full. And you just keep doing that until it fills up. Now sometimes you have a piece of pearl that'll want to lift, so you gotta hold it down. And it's not that it wants to lift as much as the wood's curl. Now, I just want to flush this off. parts I want to inlay will be the tulips, I have a teardrop, and I'm going to have some dots. And that's an easy one. Cool. Now the tulip goes in and it actually picks up off of this little line right here on the other side. Now if you can see that set of lines, that came out very well. <laughs> and again, it's just hit the points and then connect the dots. Now what I will do here with this sweep is I'm going to make a series of little punches. That makes, the little punches make drop, drawing out that stem a lot easier. And that will plop right in here. Now what happened to the other one happened to this one, there's a uh, little weakness. Pearl has a grain just like wood, and the other side broke the same way, but it will fit in here. I've already had them break so bad where I had to recut them. That middle. Yeah, the man who taught me how to do this is up in Malone, New York. Mr. David Nichols. And Dale Truck out of CF Morton helped me a lot too. I've had a number of great mentors. Find my French curve. I can emulate that curve. And then I'm going to put three little marks here for three dots. I work my wax paper underneath here. Take my super glue. Now this side's going to be pretty much the same as the other side. I'll take my French curve. 
If I know that I had used it this way, I can mark right here with my pencil and just flip it over. My pencil mark. And this is just going to give me a rough point to emulate that curvature on this side. Now this guy did me the honor of breaking. Now I can fix that. And this trick, I'm going to put that together, get my tweezers. A little bit of super glue on there. Now I can work with this to line this out. And it's going to be the same process that I just did. All right. Now I'm going to take a look at this while I have it in my hand. I have a couple of bubbles I want to fill yet. And then, with this still at the same setting, I can run it right through. Most people hit this with a sanding block. We have a headstock veneer ready to go. And look at that pearl glimmer. And that's how you do pearl inlay 101. Spend the day with me. I hope you can see how nice this turns out. This is a great little jig for using to doing inlay work. And before I say goodbye, I would like to show you one more little trick from Blues Creek Guitars. When you have your little pipettes and you think that they're worn out, or you got to get somewhere really, really tight and controlled. Just hold this over a match. Let it soften for a minute or two, and then you can pull this out. Let it hang. And now you've just made yourself a pipette to get you into very tight corners where you can drop your super glue very, very precisely. Again. Okay, now let's get into cutting pearl. Now there's a number of types of pearl. We have solid shell. This is mother of pearl. And mother of pearl is more of a white material. We have ablam. I'm sure we've all heard of ablam. Ablam comes in a sheet. And if you look closely, you can see how they've placed little pieces of the solid shell. I kind of liken this to the plywood of pearl. It's a very nice way to use up pearl because they use a lower quality underneath it and they put a veneer of the good stuff on top. I'm not sure of the process and how they do it. All that I know is that it is very friendly with pearl. We have a number of different types of shell. Uh, you can get all kinds of stuff and you can see here there's got some neat color play with it. Uh, I'm a process person. I'm not very artistic. So I got, I work on patterns. I, I can't draw for beans, so I will work off of a pattern. So working off of a pattern, you can do one of two things. You can buy stuff in. Uh, these are from a good friend of mine, Andy DePaul. Uh, Luthier Supplies. Give them a look-see. 
Also, custom pearl inlay, Dave Nichols, a very good friend of mine. He can provide you not only with the pearl, the abalam, the shell, he also can provide you with this. This is the tool that we're going to use to cut pearl. Now when you look at this blade, that blade is so fine, you have to look at it under a magnet viewer to really see the teeth. You can feel them and you got to know which way the, the, the teeth go and you want to cut on the downstroke. So you want to set this up so your teeth are pointed down and when you get your, your, your blades they'll come in a little bag and these are believe it or not ten blades there is a little wire on here and what I'll do is I'll untie this one end comes off easier than the other there we go and I'll untie like that and I will lay them right there so I don't have to worry about knocking them on the floor how many will I go through all depends I can go through a pile of them some days I go through very few for those of us that wear glasses getting an OptiViewer these are the two different kind of OptiViewers that I found there's some least expensive and then you have the Bosch which is more costly uh, trust me they might work for people without glasses if you have lenses you got to match your focal points and you put these on with with trifocals it, it's going to throw you so you better find something decent I found the Bosch and Loam to be by far the best. They're a little bit more expensive, but they will come with a number of different lenses. You can set these up to fit your eyes, and usually they're in the around $40 range. This was like a $9 pair. I thought it was pretty neat because it flipped up. It had this little loop on here, but the focal planes really don't match my lenses very well. Um, for those of you who are fortunate enough not to need glasses, they may be fine but for me being I think I'm far-sighted inside of eight feet I'm blind these really don't work well for me plus they're very uncomfortable the the banding is kind of hard the Bosch and Loam has a nice padding so these would be what I'm going to be wearing so there's the cutting tool and here is a pattern that I've already prepped now how do you prep a pattern well, first off, you got to decide what you want to do. You aren't going to try to inlay the Tree of Life the first time that you do this. Uh, I recommend working with something simple, geometric shapes, squares, oblongs, ovals. The, the, your mind can work very well with the simple geometric shapes. From there, you can start doing more complicated shapes. Now this is a very simple shape, you can see it, it's just a part of a floor de lis uh, I downloaded these patterns off of the internet, and there is a whole series of them. And you can see, we, this is the first one, the second, the third, and you can see there's a whole series of them. And if you cut these all out, you can actually make a really nice little pattern. I recommend starting with these because number one you can see the complexity goes up as you learn very simple a little bit harder basically simple but you're learning to get a little bit tighter here you're getting tighter still with a little detail some more detail and back here you're getting into some really nice tight curves and the more you do this the better you get uh, you don't necessarily have to use pearl to start uh, no sense ruining something when you can use a piece of wood the main thing is to learn the technique so I'm going to make a pattern I'm going to take a piece of paper now you can use all kinds of material you can use uh, rubber cement you can use hide glue you can use almost anything uh, for this I found good old-fashioned tight bond I'll take a piece of pearl I'll just put a little dab of glue and now I'm going to spread the glue out and I'll spread the glue out nice simple nothing really bad and I'm just going to stick that on there now that will take a few minutes for that to dry so we will let that sit and dry and then when it's dry we have this 
I want to get that little bit of glue off of there. So now we're getting ready to cut. So you, I'll show you how to put a blade in. This blade's dull. And you will loosen this up. Now, when you open this up out of the box, and like I said, you can get these from David Nichols. You can find them in a lot of places, but Dave Nichols carries them. Uh, he's up in Malone, New York, 518-483-7685. Tell him I told you to call him. And you can call him 630 in the morning. <laughs> uh, please don't do that. Call him about 8. Anyway, so now, I need to put my little eyeball on. Because I want to take a look at my blades. The way I'm laying that, my blade is showing that it's sharp this way. And you can tell by putting it on your thumbnail, and you can feel it grab. Now uh, you can probably see how that's trying to grab my thumbnail right there. So since I want to cut it on the downstroke, I'm going to adjust this. As you can see, these go in and out. And I will put the blade in on the top. You put the teeth out, which makes sense. And you can see I'm going to get this in here. I see that that I'm not quite all the way up, but a good part of it. Now, because I want to apply tension to this blade, you can see I have maybe a quarter of an inch. And I tighten that up. So when I go to put the blade in, I can push against here. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's probably an A flat. So now I have this in here. I'm ready to cut. And what you need to be aware of is your body position. Do not hold this like a coping saw. This is just a light touch. And I mean just light. I do not hold this very hard. If you hold it hard, your hands are going to clamp up. Keep your shoulders relaxed. And to be honestly, I love to put something, some slow blues on when I'm cutting pearl. It puts me in a good mood. It's a nice rhythm. Body mechanics. Since this is my table for sewing, you can see it's just nothing but a piece of wood, a slot, and I have a drill hole in it. I'm going to be working in here, and I'm going to be using this slot and this hole. My body mechanics are such that I'm going to put this right in line with my shoulder. I'm going to have my nose right on top of here. And you can see that that squares me up very well. You don't want to be cutting like this and like this or like angle. First off, you're going to break a lot of blades. But when you go to inlay this, you want the sides to be reasonably square. So to start, I'm going to just start cutting. I will purposely break a blade because I'm sure you're going to. And I'm going to show you how to go back and work over once you break a blade. So you got to get into the pearl first. Uh, a good thing to do when you start cutting is take a piece of scrap and just kind of get into the feel of what you're going to do. Light. I have my eyeballs, now I need light. So I have a little halogen lamp that I can put in here directional so I have plenty of light. I don't want shadows. I got to be able to see. So now I'm going to take a practice cut just to get a feel of what I'm doing and kind of like warm up. I mean if you're going to play baseball you just don't go out running. You kind of got to warm up the stretch. One of my favorite exercises is I'll just start cutting and you notice with me right right on top of the pearl my blade square. My hand I'm going to show you how I'm holding it. Just like this. And it is not, I'm not tight. I mean, this is nice, nice and easy. Pretend I'm holding a red hot poker. I don't want to grasp hold of it. I just, just that I'm touching it. I just got to control it. Now, as I start cutting, I'm using my two fingers to hold this down flat. You notice my nose is reasonably on top of my work. My shoulder is somewhat in line with this. I may not be perfect, but I'm reasonably in line. If I get too much like this, then I'm going to want to tilt my blade. I'm finding a good rhythm. And the more you do this, you'll feel the blade working. And if you listen, you can hear it cutting. Now, there's a straight line. Now I want to practice the curve. 
And you notice I am not stopping. My rhythm is about the same. And I want to do this so that I can turn that around. Sometimes it'll grab. When it grabs, take a short stroke and just work it. And I want to warm up to the point where I can cut a nice little thin piece out. And what I'm trying to do here is just kind of get used to how my pearls work. So, I'm not ready yet, so I'm going to take another cut. And you can see I'm getting nice, nice circle. Things are, are not binding. I'm starting to warm up. Because you're trying to you're trying to feel your feed rate to that saw blade, how the pearl's cutting, how you're working, and use the blade. Don't just do that. Use your blade. And there we go. I'm kind of warming up. Now, if a blade would break, eh, I can't break one now, naturally. We probably will at some point. If you break a blade, you want to start back at the beginning. Just don't try to cut in from another angle. Always want to start back at the beginning. Uh, so I feel comfortable that my technique's good. I'm loosened up. I'm going to start cutting this out. Now, where do you start? I like to start at the pointy part. You notice I'm using my fingernail to get started, and once I get started, I can get a little aggressive at it. That is what you have to learn. You've got to learn that feel of how hard can you push on the blade and cut. Now, I'm getting into my work. And what I want to show you is how do you work your line? Uh, I think this is the hardest thing that people got to learn is that you want to work on the line. Uh, basically, the outside line mark is what you want to cut off. Just try to stay in the line. Uh, I'm going to try to follow that black line the best I can. And when I go to inlay my pearl, that black line when I draw is basically going to be the outside of when I go to set this in. So, okay, I'm ready to cut. You can see I'm right at that point. And away we go. Now I'm going to hold that down. And I want to hold my, my, my pearl firmly because I don't want it to, you don't want it to flop around. At the same point, you're going to have to develop a feel to know when you're jamming up. And you want to make sure that you're under your hole that you aren't cutting into the wood. So you, you're kind of working, move, feel, and you can see I'm right on that line. And you try to get a nice, even uh, rhythm going. You can hear the blade working. I am getting off the line here a little bit. I want to show you what will happen if you do that. It's not the end of the world. Uh, follow it to your next point of the pattern, and we can make corrections when we sand this pearl up and do the final bit. You notice how I'm not stopping making my turn, all right? Now, that piece of pearl broke because I'm pretty thin at the shell corner, no big deal. And I want to mention, if you feel something starting to cramp up, stop and think about what's cramping and what you're doing. Uh, this is not about pressure, this is about finesse. So if your fingers are cramping up, you're holding down too hard. If your saw hand's cramping up, you're holding too hard. And think about letting your shoulders relax. So. You know, every minute or so, just you might see me move my shoulders because I'm I'm physically moving them, so I know that I relax. Because if you start getting tight, uh, it won't work well for you. Now you can probably see I'm coming to an inside corner here. Oh, 
there's now a blade broke. Take your blade out. And this will happen to you. Uh, and sometimes you get some bad blades. Sometimes you, they're, they're kind of tempered pretty hard. But if you start blade, blade, breaking a lot of blade, it might be that you're getting too tight. Now, when a blade breaks, what do you do? You start right back at the beginning and start cutting again. If you try to come from this direction and you try to match that in, it won't work. Uh, they'll leave like a little nib there. This way, it's a fluid line and you always will clean up nice. So here we go. And you notice I'm using short jerks there just to get through it. Now, Bones is above my saw, and there, I'm at my corner. Now, to get that to turn the corner, sometimes you want to do little shorties like that, and I'm not turning real fast. I'm letting the blade clear the pearl to allow it to turn. And I'm always trying to make sure that I'm near my little hole, and now I can let her rip. Now, you can also come down here on your straight area, where you have more support, And you know you're doing pretty good when you can feel the heat. There will be some heat there. Now, I've come to my point. I don't want to come over here and do this side. I'm just going to keep rolling. Again, watch me turn the pearl. Short little... You can hear it fighting. And you can feel on the blade. You can feel that it's working. Uh, when it clears its path, it becomes pretty fluid. And once I'm fluid, then I can go at her again. And you notice I'm trying to use a good bit of my blade. I'm relaxed. And here I come down to another inside corner. And I'm just going to take those short little choppies and I can, I'm, I'm not holding the pearl down hard. I want to be able to feel that when it wants to lift. Because if I fight it, that's when you're going to break a blade. So that's a little feel thing that you got to learn to do. And here we go. Almost there. There I am, I'm at my corner. And one more corner to turn. Oh, I pushed too, try to push a little too hard. You have to feel that, that blade loosening. If you try to turn it and you bind it, that is what happens. When you call Custom Pearl and order this stuff, he can tell you exactly which blades you need. There, there's like beginner blades and then there's when you get a little bit better. Uh, and again, start back here. And you start from the beginning. And here we go, turn the corn. And there we go. And I'm, I'm, I'm putting a, a, a decent amount of force on this blade. I mean, I'm not, it's not like I'm trying to cut butter. Probably 
probably about the same amount of force as if you gave a good firm handshake, maybe a little more. And you can see me keep moving my head around. I'm trying to keep, uh, trying to see through the shadows. I'm trying to anticipate where I'm going. Trying to keep square. I can feel my shoulders getting tight. Now I'm getting near the end. So I don't want to be through the big hole. I want to be right here where I can support it. And now I'm going to come out. And when you get near the end, all of a sudden it'll plank right out of there. So you got to be careful. Because the smaller the piece is, the more it's going to want to jump. And now I'm kind of, I'm going to do a little bit of Rocky so I can get out. So there's my first piece. Now what I will want to do is I'm going to take my little Dremel tool here and I'm going to plug this in so I can sand and clean my edges off. I'm just going to clean this off. You can see I'm going, I'm cleaning up my line now. I'm actually pretty happy with that. Okay, you can see it looks like the picture. Okay. So that's the simple, basic process of cutting pearl. Uh, you just have to start basically using the building blocks. So you, you aren't going to learn to to do everything on the first day. But working with this, and probably the best advice is try to do three at a time. If you can get three good ones in a row, go to the next one. Uh, it may sound tedious but that is the best way to learn just don't do it once make sure you can repeat it uh, it is a, a wonderful art material it, it just gives you a spectacular thing to to look at uh, it sure as heck beats just a plain piece of wood on your guitar so that is the simple basic how to cut pearl the second piece of pearl out and what I'm doing uh, this is actually part of a series to help make some a more complicated inlay but it's still the same basic process you're cutting one piece at a time you can see I'm pretty much trying to follow the line I'm trying to stay relaxed I'm trying to keep my nose above my saw. Trying to use as much of the saw blade as I can. And this is a little bit more of a... This is a little bit above the, the uh, pattern on the line. I'm a little bit higher up to show you a little bit more difficult to cut. This piece of pearl I got too, even though it's mother of pearl, is a little bit different than the first one. This one here seems to be probably a little thicker. It's also a little bit harder. So it doesn't want to cut quite as easy as that first piece. So I have to be careful. A nice sharp corner here. And I'm blowing my dust away just I know some guys have little little setups to blow their, their dust away. However, we wouldn't want to hear a fan running while we're cutting this, so I'll do it the old fashioned way. Now I'm gonna get near the end here where I'm gonna come out, and I just wanna be careful that I don't fling my curl somewhere. And here we come. Now I have this piece that can fit into here. 
So you can see everything's about fitting things together. You, you can get a pattern, you can buy patterns, you can make patterns. Uh, the key is you learn the basic of how to cut this out. Uh, it's just, you got to do it. This is the basic process of cutting. Uh, the more you do, the better you get at it. So at this point, just start practicing. You can use wood, plastic. I like to use Corian. If you know anybody that has a uh, Corian shop, you talk to these guys and they're often more than happy to give you some of the scrap. Uh, the other nice thing about Corian, it gives you a, a whole color palette that you can use so that you can do some of this other work, uh, like here. Here they use some Corian and some Pearl to make something a little bit more colorful. Uh, this is just straight Pearl. Uh, it's just like painting. It's a palette and uh, you got to find what you like. So go for it. And again, thank you. Uh, we're going to show you how to inlay this little piece now. So we're going to take this. I'm going to put this into a fingerboard. I've practiced doing some inlay work already. We all know about the other videos that I have. Uh, square diamonds, shapes, they're all... It's, the process is the same. But now that you've cut your own pearl, you have it in this form. You want to get this paper off. So you just soak it in water. Uh, Mr. Nichols, I think, uses rubber cement and heptane. There's so many different ways of marking your patterns. These are the techniques that I've done. Uh, I'm sure you'll find some more on the future video. You need a good pencil. Uh, you need some layout tools. I use a 0.3 millimeter pencil. Uh, you can find them like at Staples. Uh, this is a nice little, nice little way to mark your pearl because you're actually going to be able to see the pencil marks. Uh, you want to play with your light so that you can see your pencil line. You're going to, depending upon what you're doing, you always got to start with the center line. In this case, since this is just demonstration, we're going to pretend that the center line has already been laid out. The water is going to soften the glue. I'll be able to take the paper off. I'm going to use a little scribe, which is just nothing more than a nail to hold this down. I'll use this to trace it, and then I'm going to use the inlay tools to cut it out. Now, I purposely have a dull bit in here so that you can see what a dull bit does, what you got to look for. Uh, I can't stress enough, you want a sharp bit. A dull bit leaves a lot of fuzzies, starts to develop a lot of heat, and you need that crisp, clean line. So we'll let this set for a little bit and let that paper soften off, and we'll see you in the magic of editing in a few and seconds. After a few minutes of soaking in water, the glue will release so I can take the paper off. And there we go. We have two pieces of pearl. And we can use this in any combination. Whatever your pattern would show how to set up your, your design, that's what you're going to follow. Uh, I'm just going to use this as, a, as an example that we want to bring the one side up against the other. In essence, we're kind of putting together a puzzle. So I'm going to put my little glasses on. Now one tool that you need is something to hold the pearl while you're lining it out. Uh, there's a lot of things that you can do. This is one of my favorites. And it's just a simple nail. And you can see I grind, that's a pretty, pretty potent point. And all I'm going to do with this is to lay this down so that I can hold the pearl while I work my pencil. Now I like to normally have this pretty well attached so I can work with it. Uh, you can use clamps, uh, simple tape will work if you hand me that little tape dispenser. I want this so it doesn't move. So I will literally tape my work right to the table. So that gives me a little bit of a firm pattern so it's not going to move around so much. Now for the sake of discussion, Let's just say that that's our, well, that ain't a straight line. Let's just say this is our, this would be our center line. All right? 
I want to lay this up so it is on center. I take my little holder and I can line this up so that my points are on the center line. Okay, now I'll just hold that down with this. Now you can see I'm, I can do a pencil mark and I'm not applying a lot of pressure but I'm doing enough that I can get my pencil into the very corner of my pearl. So when I lift this off you can see how nice the pattern is. This piece, let's just, I'm, I'm putting this on just as a, a sake of demonstration, is going to tie into here and let's just say that's the way the pattern wanted it to go. So I'm just going to roughly lay this out. Oops. And usually when it moves like that you want to take it out and remark everything. However, this is probably one of the more difficult skills to learn how to hold that and make your marks. So I know that this line's going to come into here, this line's coming into there, and we'll work from there. Now, this has a 30 second bit you can see that the bit is dull. So you can see how black it is. Uh, that means I overheated it. Right. What I will do, I'm just going to make a little cut so you can see what you're watching for. You adjust this little cutter to be the depth of your pearl. You can see that it's pretty close. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop little holes like at all of the main points. So here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six points. I'm going to drill six little holes with this little so you'll know what to watch for because how long these last has to do with how hard the material is, how you feed, uh, speed, everything comes into play. So you can see here I got a lot of fibers coming up and that's not exactly the way I want this to work. So I'm going to put a new bit in. I'm going to use the 30 thousandths bit because this is not really fine work. There's two different size, sizes. You have right here, you want to get in on that one and that captures here. Then this one comes down here. Loosen that up and the bit comes out. Put the new bit in. Tighten it back up. And you can see it's not that difficult. Make sure it's snug. I mean, you don't want to blow this thing out. All right. Now I now now have a brand new bit. I want to again check the depth of my pearl. And here's the one piece I cut out, so I can actually use that to check. Now that bit may have been a little bit shorter or I may have seeded it a little bit deeper. So I'm going to loosen this up and I'm going to drop the bit a little bit and by loosening the bottom ones I can drop the bit in. And I'm just going to snug them up with my hand, finger tight, and you can see I'm not quite there. So I'll give it about a quarter turn. And that's just about perfect. I'm going to tighten on this side. And that should pull me that I am just not, not quite through the pearl. Okay, now look at what the cut's going to look like with a sharp bit. Also, I want to make a point. Normally, I have my air hose hanging down so I don't have uh, that fighting me. So in this case, I'm just going to hold it here. Now watch how clean that line will get. No fibers hanging. When you start seeing a lot of fibers hanging, 
I usually, if I can just go like that and they come off, I'm not too unhappy. Once they start sticking, then I got to put in a new bit. Uh, you'd be surprised how much, how long these will last if you match your feed rate. So now I'm going to pop a hole, pop a hole, pop a hole, and I'm going to just basically connect the dots. So you can see the holes are there. I'm not looking at this whole inlay as a single part. I'm going to look at it at smaller parts. It, to me, in my mind, it makes the inlay process easier. Uh, when you're all done, you'll have it all totaled out. So I'm going to do the big, long, swirly lines. You also have to remember the direction of your cut. As your blade is spinning this way, a route cut would be this way on that line. Uh, the trouble is, think about how you're spinning. If your bit is spinning like this and it grabs, it'll want to go out of its work. So you want to make it so that if it does grab and pull, it goes into the work and not out. you can see I, I've connected the dots. I'm going to do this one, this one, and I'm just going to keep going now. I'm using the light as my friend to reflect off of my pencil line so I can see it. Now you can see I've cut a pocket and I have to see how well this is going to fit. I can manipulate things a little bit if I have to and I'm not perfect, I'm not totally worried if everything is not 100% to the mark. If I got to do a little manipulating, I'm, the secret is in how to fill. So you can see by putting the pearl in there, I have a couple of gaps to fill. And I clean them out, and this will just be a couple of test fits until finally it'll just about go in on a little bit light down here at the end. You want to mark your pearl so that you know which is going to be the side in and which is out. I'm catching right here. Now she got. You can see that's in there. And I can run across here, and you can hear I'm just catching the pearls just barely sticking out the top. So when I radius this, it'll be nice. Now this next piece of pearl that I'm putting in there, which is the little squirrely thing here, I'm going to double check my alignment, how everything looks like it's going to fit. Doesn't look bad. Normally I take my pearl out for this. And I'm going to start, same thing, all of my little sharp corners I'm going to punch a hole and I'll just go from there, connect my dots.
Okay. Now, when I use this pencil method, nine times out of ten, if I'm very good at the way I lay out my line and I drop it, I actually have to take the pencil line with it. So, this is about done. I want to take a look how this fits. Porker's head doesn't look too bad. I got a few areas that I need to open. That's not bad. Okay, right there. Just a little bit. Now when you do this, these real fine touches, you almost hardly even have to touch. That This thing's turning, uh, now this one here is the, the 70,000 unit. Uh, this one here is about 350 bucks, it's for the pro guy. This is 56,000 and it works very similarly, uh, but it works with such a light touch. A Dremel tool, which I'm going to do a little bit with the Dremel tool, a Dremel tool with a slower bit sometimes have a tendency to do what I call grab and run. So I did these little finite nibbles just to get this to see where I'm going to get it to drop. I want to keep my gapping to a minimum of all possible. I mean after all I don't want to have big ugly holes to fill. But I can see right here I need to open some up. And this is where you need to work getting two pieces to fit together and be reasonably seamless. Because it can be difficult. I'm using the tweezers because there's times you just can't handle it any other way. And I have to open this a little bit. Here. And trying to get that seamless line with two pieces of pearl, it's a knack, and you have to practice. So I got that coming in nice, that's nice. I need to go rid of a little bit. And I think the hardest thing is to learn how to handle the pearl. Almost there. Right here you can see there's a little bit of a pencil mark I gotta clean. But you don't have to work the tool hard. Let the tool do the work. This is the tedious part, right there, and you can see just how little bit I got to move. I'm talking probably maybe 15,000. Now I'm not, I don't, I want to keep my gap as reasonably tight as I can, uh, but there are ways to fill this stuff that it can be almost invisible. And I would rather take 20 or 30 little cuts than one big oops cut. And the more you do this, the more proficient you get. And it's almost in right here. Just I'm talking a test. I 
ever so slightly at that little Now there's a lot of different methods of, of laying this out. I've, I've seen people scribe and chalk, I've seen people pour wax, I've seen a lot of different methods. Find the method that works for you. There we go. That should drop. And now the other piece. I have a gap here. So I'm going to want to close that up. I'm going to have to move out over here, which I'll do in a second. Or you can show your, your gap. Whatever is your style. Uh, some people will show them. I'm now ready to what I call drop the pearl. We're in. Uh, there's a couple of different methods. People will use epoxy. Uh, they'll dye it a little bit. Uh, I'm a big fan of just super glue and uh, this little trick here with Sharpie pencil. Uh, if I were doing a large inlay, I would probably use the epoxy. Uh, but for this you'll see that this works pretty well. I just take my magic marker and I apply a liberal painting of the magic marker. Alright, I'm going to take my activator and when I spray the activator watch what happens to that magic marker. See how it turns liquid and almost precipitates, but the color is still there. You might think that you'd want to drop in ebony dust and super glue. Uh, what happens is then you make like an amalgam and the texture of it will stand out like a halo, like right here. You, you can see how you can see the ring around the pearl. Well, here it's almost invisible. What we'll do when I apply the super glue, the super glue is going to pick up this color. And while it's not going to be a dark black, it'll be a slightly translucent color. And what that will allow, that will allow the wood to come up from the bottom of the glue. So it actually will look like it's part of the wood. Uh, I will probably give this another little dose of glue. And I'll let that cure. After a minute or two, I'll use the activator, but I want to let this to start curing on its own. If I hit it too quick with the activator, uh, the reaction will be so quick, it'll foam, and then that leaves like a little white mark. Okay, it's starting to cure, and then I can literally watch it crystallize in the light and the reflection, and it's just about done. So what I will do at this point, if this whole fingerboard was to be an, a particular inlay at this point, I will take it and I will sand it and I'll polish it. So now that that is dry, now usually when I'm done sanding it, I would take a radius block and I would block it. And I usually go upstairs to my power buffer to buff this off. I'm just going to do this with a little bit of steel wool. Now I use two different shades of pearl here so that you can see how this all fits together. And just with a few minutes, now I got a little bit of work here to do with I gotta do a little bit more sanding. But now you can see those gaps have disappeared. And I can take the color off right there. Okay. 
and there you have it. And that's how you inlay pearl. And you hand cut it, and you can use almost anything. It's, it's your imagination. But that's the process. I hope you have learned something. Thanks again for coming to YouTube and Blues Creek Guitars, and we'll see you soon. Thanks.